I am a Yank in Sussex. Not far from the town of Arundel, in West Sussex lie a pair of tiny and ancient villages called North Stoke and South Stoke. Both villages date from before the Norman conquest, though no one knows for sure how long before. They sit across the river Arran from each other, and just a half mile separates them. One might be tempted to refer to them together as the Stokes, but as usual in England, they are not the only villages of these names, or that have Stoke in their names. In fact, there are three other pairs of North and South Stokes. In Lincolnshire, far to the north in England, you can find the village of Stoke Rookford. But until the 1830s, it was the two villages of North and South Stoke. In Oxfordshire, you can find another pair of Stokes, a North and a South, located just a mile and three quarters apart on the east bank of the River Thames. And in Somerset, there is a third pair of Stokes, North and South, although in this case they are separated by about five and a half miles, with the city of Bath, also known as Bath, lying between them. As is my usual practice, I searched for the etymology of the word Stoke in connection with place names. And it's kind of all over the place. In fact, the word place is the key. I'll explain this in a few seconds. But first, here's an incomplete list of places in England that contain Stoke in their name. An asterisk next to the name means there's more than one. In modern English, the word Stoke is a verb, meaning to feed or tend to fire. And it comes from a West Germanic word meaning to poke or thrust. You know, how one might poke wood into a fire or poke around in a fire in order to stir it up to burn better. But the stoke in all these place names comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word, stoke, and I'm not sure of the original pronunciation, but perhaps it's similar. This is a word that meant simply place. Later, it ended up being used to refer to a place outlying farmstead or hamlet, secondary or dependent settlement, or in other words, not a major place. And indeed, the vast majority of Stokes are small villages or hamlets. The big exceptions to this are, of course, Stoke-on-Trent and Basingstoke, a large city and town, respectively. Well, there you go. If you ever see the word Stoke being used in a place name, now you know why. There are actually three Stokes in Sussex, North, South, and West. Curiously, there's no East Stoke to correspond with West Stoke. It turns out that West Stoke is actually west of North and South Stoke, so one might think there's a connection of some sort. But it's 12 miles to the west, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't relate to them in any way. In any case, I'm only going to cover North and South Stoke in this video. As you can see from the satellite photos, these villages are overwhelmingly rural and agricultural. And like most villages in Sussex, they live primarily from animal husbandry. In the case of the two Stokes, it's mainly sheep, or at least on my visits I saw no other farm animal, except for a few horses in South Stoke. Most of the land not occupied by buildings is either pasture for grazing or used to grow fodder of one sort or another for the animals. Both villages are small in population, but it's hard to know just how many people live in them. In 1933, the population of North Stoke was 70, but now it's a part of Amberley Parish, and based off appearances, I'd be surprised if it had more than about 10% of the parish's total of 533. In other words, I'd estimate that North Stoke has no more than 50 inhabitants, and that might be stretching it a bit. South Stoke is counted as part of Houghton Parish, which does seem odd, since Houghton is closer to North Stoke than South Stoke, especially in road distance. Houghton Parish has a population of about 150, and it seems that South Stoke might be about a third of that, perhaps at 44 inhabitants. If anyone from either village who watches this video has a better idea of how many people live in each one, I'd welcome a comment uh, to that regard in the comments. Coming from the vicinity of Storrington, or Stenning, further east, one would travel on the B2139 road towards Amberley, which features the Amberley Working Museum that I hope to visit soon. And just after passing the entrance to Amberley's train station on the left, one finds the turnoff towards North Stoke. 
This road is a normal country road, narrow, with occasional wider places to enable opposing vehicles to pass each other. As you can see from the map, North Stoke is mostly surrounded by a large bend of the River Erin. Most of the village lies higher than the elevation line marking 5 meters above mean sea level, which is approximately as high as most high tides rise. This means that in past times, before the river was inned or equipped with a levee, much of the area marked in blue highlight was flooded by salty water from the English Channel during the daily high tides. That's also the reason for the various drains or sewers that crisscross the lowland, since the river's water level at any time represents the height of the water table. Without these drains, the fields would be too soggy to work with, except during dry spells. You'll find this kind of drainage work on all of Sussex's tidal rivers. When was the Aran end thoroughly enough to enable drainage of the tidal wetlands around these villages? I've not been able to find out, but I suspect it's been this way for many hundreds of years. While due to its end-of-the-road situation, North Stoke seems to be quite isolated, in fact it is quite close to the National Transportation Network. The busy B2139 road passes by just a half mile north of the village, and also right there is the Amberley train station. The train line, which goes from the coast to Gatwick Airport and London, rolls by just east of the village. You can be at Gatwick Airport from here in less than an hour from boarding, and trains depart every hour from here starting at about 6 a.m. to midnight. Driving into North Stoke, one sees a number of farm utility buildings, and at the end of the road, one comes to North Stoke Farm and the Village Church, which is dedicated to St. Mary the Virgin. The Church of St. Mary the Virgin is actually a former Church of England parish church. The present building dates to the 11th century and was mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 1086. It's a cruciform building that is mostly unrestored and stands on an ancient earthwork which has pre-Christian origins. There was a church here during Anglo-Saxon times and was at that time probably built of wood. Under the Normans, its structure was gradually replaced by stone. Its architectural features and internal fittings span back hundreds of years, including some very old stained glass and wall paintings, although it's rather plain when compared to other Sussex churches of a similar age. Some parts of the church are extremely old. In particular, the simple timber roof design has lasted for more than 700 years without the need for alteration. The timber work is clearly visible in the nave and south transept in particular. The village it served has gotten smaller in population since the beginning of the 20th century, and that, combined perhaps with lessened interest in church attendance over time, caused church authorities to declare it redundant, or surplus to requirements, which in this context means no longer regularly used for church services. It's now looked after by the Church's Conservation Trust. Sometimes disused churches like this one are deconsecrated, but St. Mary the Virgin remains in consecration. As such, for special occasions, church services are conducted here. Interestingly, for a long time, this church was called the North Stoke Church, but in 2007, at the National Archives in London, researchers found a document dated in 1275, which indicated that the church had originally been dedicated to St. Mary the Virgin during the reign of King Henry I, Longshanks. Accordingly, a rededication ceremony was held at the now redundant church on 8 December 2007, at which it was officially renamed from the North Stoke Church to St. Mary the Virgin Church. With just a half mile between them, North and South Stoke are very close neighbors, but they aren't connected directly to each other except for a footpath. Interestingly, that footpath crosses over one of the wider of the numerous field drains, also called sewers, that divide up the ground around North Stoke. This footpath crosses that drain on a suspension bridge, which was damaged by a fallen tree in 2009. It was subsequently rebuilt by British Army Gurkhas, and is now called the Gurkha Suspension Bridge. If you want to travel in a car to South Stoke from North Stoke, however, you have to go the long way around through Arundel. In contrast to the half mile walk, this drive will cover seven and a half miles. Drive up the road you came in on for a half mile and into the south part of Amberley, 
making a left on the B2139 road heading west. You'll cross the River Aran, pass through Houghton, and continue up the slope of the Aran Valley until you reach the White Ways uh, roundabout. From there, head down the London Road towards Arundel. Once you reach Arundel, drive through town, or whichever route you prefer, swing around Arundel Castle, and head towards Offham. If you're hungry, stop at the Black Rabbit Pub for a bite, then continue up the road. The road turns right at a gate that leads into Arundel Park, and you'll continue on to South Stoke. Be careful of the tight road just before you get to the village itself. This is a farming community, and there's a reasonably good chance that you'll end up facing a large tractor, and you'll be the one who has to back up. You can see from the map that South Stoke is closely bound by the river, and isn't surrounded by an extensive drainage system like North Stokes. The slope from the village down to the river is naturally a bit steeper. Because the village is rather well constrained by the river bend, it seems a little cozier than North Stoke, though that's merely an observation and not a criticism. An interesting feature of the village is a rentable hall, which is part of the South Stoke farm. On one of the days I visited the village, there was a wedding or wedding reception being held there with lots of cheerful music and happy celebrants. It's a beautiful 19th century granary barn, and it's one of just five built on farms around Arundel by the Duke of Norfolk in the late 1800s, and the only one left in its original form. Most of the others in the area are now converted to houses. It probably doesn't look exactly like it did in its original form on the inside, as you can see, it's very nicely done up. I got this photo from their website. Unlike North Stoke St. Mary the Virgin Church, South Stoke St. Leonard's Church remains an active Church of England facility, though services are not held every Sunday. Currently, Holy Communion services are held only on the second Sunday of each month. There is an even song service held on fourth Sundays, in case you aren't aware of what an evensong service is, it's a church service traditionally held near sunset focused on singing psalms and other biblical canticles. Like the Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Leonard's is of ancient date, having been uh, recorded in 1086's Doomsday Book, making it close to a thousand years old, if not a good deal older. No doubt it has been upgraded and strengthened over the centuries, as its tower and spire are relatively new, perhaps added during the 1800s. The tower does hold a bell that was apparently manufactured in 1657. Most villages of a certain size in the UK have at least one pub, especially if they're somewhat isolated, and such pub could be supported by the people living in the local area outside the village itself. But North and South Stoke are small enough that they really can't support pubs on their own. Fortunately, there are pubs outside the villages that are close enough that the people there have easy access to the social benefits that public houses provide. North Stoke is close to Amberley, and Amberley being on a busy road has three pubs on that road, the Bridge Inn, the Black Horse, and the Sportsman. All three of these are less than a mile from the village. South Stoke is less well equipped with nearby pubs, unfortunately. The closest one is the Black Rabbit, which is a mile along the road towards Arundel. The next ones are in Arundel itself, a mile and a quarter further along the road. Both North and South Stoke are lovely little villages out in the quiet countryside. I was glad to finally have the opportunity to visit them after several times passing through Amberley and through Houghton on the B2139 road heading for Southwest England. There's a very nice viewpoint not far past Houghton from which one could see both villages. It looked very idyllic down there, and that impression proved quite true. This has been a production of A Yank in Sussex. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe or follow. Thanks for watching, and may you have a very nice day.